Welcome to Authentic Christianity. We hope you're blessed as you listen. All right, all right. Um, you're listening to Authentic Christianity. My name's Ade, and I'm here with my very good friend and one of our leaders called Pip Earl. Um, and we just want to talk about the fins of the kingdom today. We want to talk about fins. I've got some very good questions for Pip. Uh, and Pip, you want to say hello? Yeah, hello. My name's Pip, and I'm, I'm a good friend of Ade's. Yes, I'm looking forward to the questions, I think. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Pip, one of my first questions for you is what are some of the most important things you think in, in believing in Jesus? Some of the most important things. Yes. Well, I've always been struck by the, 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 I think as a man, I've always wanted an A, B, C, D. If you do A, B, C, and D, you equal salvation and everything goes right. And there's only one thing in the Bible that really talks about that. And that was when Christ said to the Pharisees, who were equally frustrated about having all their rules trashed. And they said to him, well, he said to them rather, um, love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor. Wow, fantastic. And how have you seen that play out in your own life? In, in all sorts of amazing ways. And also, um, I think I've learned from not only the ways I've seen it displayed well, but also the ways that um, I've, I've really messed it up myself and made mistakes in it. And I think so often we do. We learn from the both good and the bad. And I'm pleased to say, or I hope I can say, that at the age of nearly 50, um, I... I've learned an awful lot from my own mistakes, but hopefully come through the other way, the other side of it. Can you give us an example of that? Or you've made a mistake and come true and God's done something? Um, oh, crumbs. That's put me on the spot, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of millions of mistakes. This is the trouble. Um, I suppose... Um, something where you've overcome, you know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think, you know, dare I say it, it, it the, the hardest challenge for me has been in my own marriage, funnily enough. I think it's when you when you get married to somebody and you're spending every waking moment um, with them that you get that mirror put in your face more often than not. And, and all the things that um, uh, you think are good and holy, or not all of them, some of the things you think are good and holy, uh, your wife, in my case my wife, um, sometimes points out they're not quite so holy. And I think my greatest moments of overcoming in my Christian walk have been learning to love uh, my wife when being corrected by her. Does that make sense? It yeah, sounds small, yeah, but it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a daily living, isn't it? And yeah. I think the small things can build up sometimes. And everyone who's been married knows that it's a journey mm. and that, you know, that there are great moments and there are not so great moments. And I think it's moving from those not so great moments are the times where you have to eat the most humble pie and you see some of the greatest love. Oh, fantastic. Um, my next question for you, Pip, is what, what strikes you the most about Jesus? Oh, and I see it. I'm hoping I'm going to be struck in many, many, many different ways. But I think one of the things that I would love to see and I haven't yet seen is I'd love to see... Um, well, there's two things actually now. I'm thinking about it. Two things. I'm looking forward to seeing him riding on his horse. Uh, yeah. One of the part of the imagery I often get mm -hmm. when I'm praying, or, or or people actually even give me words. It's it's always about horses, and I often see Jesus on his horse and the power and the majesty of that, um, and the excitement of what it might look like to see him yeah. when he comes the second time as a king and a warrior. And the other thing is the transfiguration. I wow. would love to see the transfiguration. I'd love to see it. Just, um, yeah, I'd love to wow. see that. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've always loved in life is experience. Absolutely. Is there any supernatural experience you've had in terms of God and Jesus that you feel would be able to encourage anyone listening? I, I think, um, I, I don't have as many. I, I've got some very prophetic friends and they seem to have experience upon experience upon experience. And I, I sometimes wonder whether I'm, I'm lacking somewhat in that, but the experience which I go back to most in my mind is um, a vision of I was uh, at, a, at a, a church weekend away and we were it was I think it was the evening service and he started uh, the host Spirit started showing me what the end time army looked like and I was, all I could see I can see part of it I could see this huge long 
front line. Wow. And it was very majestic. And we were all on horses, and there's lots of different people, all standing shoulder to shoulder, all different gifts, different colors, different shapes, sizes, accents, backgrounds, everything, all together in the front line. And what I could see, I saw various bits, but the bit that caught me the most was... Uh, it was like um, Jesus was walking down the front line, mm. in front of the front line, and he was on his horse. And as he went past, man and beast were kneeling. So the horses were dropping onto their knees and the men were, were, were dropping their weapons. And it was this incredible wow. sense of, wow. of majesty of the, as the king of kings walked past, you know, our, our, our commander-in-chief, as it were, walking past. Wow. And the honor and the excitement and the desire to do something for him. And it was all about him. And, and tremendously sort of regal and lots of sort of pomp and ceremony, I suppose, but very exciting. Wow, wow, wow. You know, something we like to talk about, Pip, and for those listening, you know, me and Pip did talk a lot about the army because Pip actually has been to war. And um, my question for you, is there any parallels or any similarities or, you know, what do you get from in terms of going to battle and, and say the Bible and scriptures, so to speak? Is there anything you, you'd like to share? We, 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 we do talk a lot about this idea and I, I know that we could probably bore your listeners for many hours on this subject <laughs> and, and I, I wouldn't want to sound like a sort Just of army thing. bore but yes I think there are so many parallels um, with uh, I, I'm not a warmonger I think it's probably worth saying that before I start that you know war, <laughs> war is a funny place it is a horrendous situation yeah, it's not a godly yeah. situation but in the act of war you can see the very best that men have got to offer and also the very worst mm -hmm. but some of the best things are the I suppose the aspects of family that mm. um, particularly the, the, the British army have in, in what we call the regimental system so we're really families um, mm. together and so what I mean by that a regiment might be a few hundred people strong and everyone has different skills different gifts different mm. parts to play and I think the most noticeable thing is first is that not many soldiers and I hope I had not done any disservice by saying this but not many soldiers die for their prime minister or probably not for their country now don't hear me wrong, you know, we do it all for our country. But really, when it comes down to it, the nitty gritty of it, we die for our buddies. Oh, I went into God. war worried about my soldiers around me. I was a young officer and I had 12 soldiers I was responsible for and three tanks. And my life for, that, for those, uh, those months that we were fighting for um, was about looking after them and making sure I got them home. Mm. And I believe that they would have died for me, uh, not because I was brilliant, but because we were a family, we were a cohesive unit, yeah. and it spoke of family, really. Oh. Oh. Uh, quite an extreme version of family, I might add. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, I guess, so I can carry on there, but I, it, the, ahead, yeah, I'm please. sorry, <laughs> but there are, there are so many aspects of the army which are, 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 are a bit like, for me, what the end time Christian family should look like. Mm. Now, of course, it's a, it's a secular representation of it, so I'm not trying to say that the army has lots of holy attributes, but I can never forget that Jesus, the only person that Jesus was amazed at in mm. the army, in, in the Bible, sorry, was the centurion. Very good, yeah. yeah. And the centurion, he... He must have had an awful lot of blood on his hands. Um, wow. You know, he would have been a tough guy. And yet there was something, you know, prob I suspect beyond what it said in the scripture, Jesus was looking at something, something that amazed him. And to, 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 for the Son of God, for God to be amazed mm. at somebody must mean quite a lot. And I, 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 I still ponder that mystery. But I do think there is an understanding of how the end time family is going to work yeah. by understanding the military family. Fantastic. And I think we're probably running out of time now. Is there anything you would like to say to anyone listening, a word of encouragement or anything? Oh, I'd like to encourage... I, 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 my, my heart is to encourage people. I love encouraging people because so often when I see people, uh, I think as I get older, the more... I see the more I get excited about. And what I mean by that is, is that I know everybody's got flaws and we've all got stuff we rather wish nobody, nobody um, knew about us. And, and there are things that people know about us that we're equally embarrassed about. However, I can promise you that when God made you, he put something amazing in you. And you need to find a group of people who will pull 
that out of you, a group of people who will stand with you, a group of people who might even want to die for you. And when you find that group of people, that group of people who want to know you and want to be known by you, mm. they will discover the go gold in you. And when they find that gold, oh my goodness, it's exciting because you've got a room and a place to make mistakes and you've got a place where you can just fly and be allowed to fly as high as you're meant to. That would be my encouragement. Find that group of friends, that group of men and women who can get round you and who want to see you fly. Not just underneath them, but to fly as high as your call to fly. Very good. Um, thank you so much, Pip, for just joining us today. And um, thank you so much for listening. Amen. Oh, thank you, Eddie. It's a real pleasure. Thank you for listening. We hope you've been blessed. Please contact us on 080 321 6698. That is 080 321 6698. Thank you. Or contact us at info at authenticchristianity.co.uk.